We are recording this for those that didn't make it. Um, so just so you know. And extension updates, uh, not much new in extension. Um, we have surpassed last year's year end numbers in membership. So that's good. We hope to have a few more. Uh, and they keep coming in. We have hit our, our uh, second or third spurt. Uh, we'll have another one at the end of May, thanks to Connie. All the first kids who have registered. And we're also working on our grant uh, that Brian got us the COVID relief funds. Uh, we're looking to hire some people, um, build some quick interest clubs, um, do some social media uh, blitzes, um, help us with our social media. Uh, if you know anybody that's interested in helping us run short-term projects, either by, for pay or for volunteering. Uh, we are looking to start four to eight week projects um, and they can be anything. They can even be attached to clubs, existing clubs. Uh, but the, the whole goal of this is to get more interest in 4-H and the projects that we offer. Um, if you know of someone who is interested, uh, let me know or let Brian know um, so we can get them on the list. Uh, for interviews. And that's pretty much it for now. Everything else is status quo. Uh, we don't know about the mask mandate for WSU yet it is under review uh, at the university level. Um, for everything outside of certain businesses and institutions, I don't know if you know, but the mask mandate will be lifted right now as of March 12th, um, institutions, governments, local governments, uh, businesses have the option to continue it. Um, and we, don't, we haven't heard what WSU is planning yet. So we should know by the 12th. So. I have a question on the volunteering for the four day week projects. Four to six weeks, yes. Do the um, volunteers need to be vaccinated and masked to do that yes, and yes. enrolled in 4-H? Yes, they, they Well, they'll, Anita, they'll have to go through that process of, of that or applying for a medical or religious exemption. It, it depends. If they're a volunteer, then it goes under the volunteer. But I'm really looking at hiring people uh, to run just these you know, six Mondays in a row in a very uh, intentional meeting design. It's a little bit different than the traditional club. Uh, but Anita, you'd be great at doing it. I'd love to hire you and pay you. It's extra cash, any of you. This is a great opportunity. So, so think about it. Thank you. And there are certain restrictions on who we can hire for what. If you run a dog project currently, I don't believe we can hire you to run a short-term Spin club on dogs. Well, actually, we, we could, Mike. It's very, it, we just have to structure it very differently. Yeah. It would be a different thing than your traditional club experience, but it's so close to it. Uh, yeah. Lots of help. And again, did I mention it's paid? It's actually paid fairly well. Um, and that's all I have uh, right now. Yep. Okay. Fairs coming up August 11th through the 14th, and it's our 75th. Um, I don't, Mike, if you if you want to you want to pull up the two logos, the yes. we have a um, couple different logos for our 75th. Uh, one will be for um, merchandise and whatnot, and then the other is more for advertising. So we'll bring both, uh, Mike will bring both those up in a minute. And it's the last, very last one of the sapphire. This is yeah, the one so that, that one. Um, let's see. 
Oh, and if you haven't lately, please visit the website. Um, I have a gal that's been doing some updating. And um, so take a look at it. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, corrections, ideas, we're definitely open to any of that. Um, see what you think. Uh, we do have some superintendent openings. I think we filled a few even as we sat here before the meeting. Um, but we do have some spaces that still need to be filled. Uh, Clover Buds is the most important one. Well, I don't say it that way, but it is important. And those Clover Buds need a leader. And um, so we need a superintendent for that. If you know anybody that might be a good fit for that, um, talk to Mike or Brian. Um, with the 22 funds. That's the last one I had. Yep. Um, so you want to pull those? Are you ready for yep. that? Or? There it is. So that's the one that'll go on clothing. It'll go on uh, merchandise that we uh, create. We'll probably create some kind of coffee mug for the 75th and some other swag, um, bags and shirts. We'll have some embroidered things. Um, that's that one. And then we have um, this, other, this other one that we're using a little bit more in uh, some of the advertising. And we'll send that out also um, via email. So you can use it if you need to. I have to get the uh, final file from that first one. And there's the one we've been using in uh, magazine or email ads that go out um, a little more grab your attention when it's in a publication, whether it's a digital one or a printed one. Uh, okay, um, Mike sent out um, the timeline. You can access it in Teams where it's you know being updated um, currently. So take a look at that. See if you have any questions about it. It has the events that we know of, the Royal Court events, as well as superintendent events, um, fair deadlines. Hopefully you've all received a copy of the fair books and you can look through that, try to get those back as soon as possible. But I think our deadline is the uh, March 19th. <laughs> he's, not, he's not looking at it. Okay. Um, it's some somewhere mid-March um, to get your, you know, at least first round of changes in, then we'll, you know, update it, review it, and then we'll send it out again for final review. Uh, and that kind of leads us into um, on the timeline, we've got Things like the Daffodil Parade is coming up April 9th. And so we're looking for anybody that wants to participate in that to let us know as soon as possible. We're going to do Tacoma, which we've done uh, before. We've had uh, the dogs have participated in the past here in this group. And, um, is that the junior or the regular? This is the regular one. So April 9th, the regular Daffodil starts in Tacoma, goes to Puyallup, it goes to or Sumner and Ording. We typically skip Sumner just because of timing. We have not, even when we sign up for it, we have not been able to squeeze it in there. I don't know how people do it, but um, so if you want to join us in Tacoma or Puyallup or Ording, um, let me know and we'll get that coordinated so we know where to meet, exchange phone numbers, whatever we need to so that we can um, coordinate it. We'll have the fair banner if you're if you're walking with your club group, you're welcome to carry your club banner if you have one. Um, uh, we just group it all together so that it's, you know, fair related and whatnot. The princesses will be there. We do have uh, six that have applied and we'll have our selection day on March, March 19th. That's what the 19th was. Um, if you wanna be involved in that at all, uh, you know, get in touch with me as well. So we have selection day, we need judges. We have um, the different events they go to. We like to have people that um, not only we have chaperones, but we have people that kind of secret shop them so that they just observe and, and they're judged on um, how they present themselves, interact with the public, 
um, and whatnot. We'll be doing maker days with them, uh, the parade, Special Olympics, Northwest Track, um, the Slugfest and Northwest Track, specifically. And, um, and then we have a few military events that we'll attend where we'll have a booth, but they will also be helping uh, the gal that runs those military events. Um, so those are just some of the activities. Anyway, those are on the list. Can I, can I ask one more question yeah. about those daffodil parades? Okay, the email that you sent out said junior daffodil parade. It, yeah, it says um, that was probably from tomorrow. Office. Office. Okay, I don't think that's okay. okay. It's from your office. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah but it only linked to the main parade. Like the LinkedIn goes to the Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Sadie said something out about the junior daffodil parade because the uh, Pierce County Council was trying to see if clubs wanted to go together and all do it as one because it's a short, it's a shorter, parade. it's like four blocks. You wait longer than you actually march. <laughs> um, I know there was one dog club that was interested. So we were trying to yeah. see if others wanted to do it with them. Um, but I had heard nothing on that one. But uh, Shelly's is different, and yeah. it's okay. We usually walk. It's a longer walk. It's usually cold and rainy and wet, but the kids have fun. But it is that longer, and it it varies. I think last time Tacoma was cold and sunny, and then Ording was rainy. And <laughs> so <laughs> if we did want to do the regular daffodil parade. Does our club need to pay the entry fee? No, no, you would just walk with the fare. Okay, so we would just notify you that you want to do that. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll coordinate which city you want to do and um, get phone numbers so we know where to meet and whatnot. Okay, so I admitted. The video's off. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay, let's see. So on to the we talked about the fair book. Um, if you have any questions about that or um, comments, just please reach out. You know, we want to get that done and get it done right. So yeah. let us know if you need help with that. Uh, we've already started working on the ribbon boxes and trying to get that order sent out by the end of March. Um, I appreciate the fact that everybody got their books in and their um, ribbon requests. I think there's just a few that I have um, questions on, but I'll reach out to you personally for those. And um, we're going to try to get your super superintendent books to you in May this time at our May meeting, and that way you'll have them a little bit earlier. Okay. That's all I got. Okay. Okay, uh, Spring Showcase is coming up faster than the fair. Um, I'd like to get the fair book, uh, the, the Spring Showcase guide out by the 1st of April. I've heard back from only three or four departments. Um, every superintendent has been notified. Uh, without changes, I'm assuming that you are staying with the classes and lots you had last year. Um, so if you don't respond to me, be ready to judge um, entries in the classes that you had last year. So please take a look at that. Mike, yes. The photos of the, the list of what photos you have. Like, it should have been in there. Wasn't what you said. I know your baking one was. Yeah, because all I had was just the class lots. Okay. We can talk afterwards. Okay. Um, and yes, uh, this year we are going back to fundraiser will happen again the 30th of April. Um, but Spring Showcase is totally different than Fundraiser. Fundraiser is a fundraiser for the council, and it's mainly animals. Although if any superintendent wants to take part in Fundraiser, uh, we're more than happy to accommodate that. Uh, but, but Spring Showcase is basically 
a practice run for the county fair. Any item that is entered into the spring showcase, almost any entry, I should say, uh, is also eligible to enter into the county fair. The only thing is they get judged in the spring showcase. Um, so if it is something they can improve between the showcase and when they enter it, uh, they're welcome to do that, to raise a ribbon from a white to a red, a red to a blue, or in some cases, hopefully a white to a blue. Um, so the judges will be putting in, uh, their comments in. Um, families will be able to go back into fair, fair entry and see what those comments were uh, to help improve that, what, what they're doing so they can have more success in the county fair. It wouldn't be applicable to food activities, would it? Uh, there might have been food activities in there. I know there was food in there, baking. Baking, yeah, I don't think there's food activities. I don't think there was. I don't know how you do it. it can be done by video. video yeah. Yeah. And I thought they had like table study and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. And I know recipes are in there. I'm not sure if that's activities or if that's no, baking. I, 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 that was baking, but I know no. uh, it was like I thought it was. Okay. Uh, it can also be set up for Zooms. So they could do their cooking by Zoom. Those, those are usually like two to three hour activities. So. <laughs> our, our Zoom accounts are unlimited. So it would be hard. <laughs> hard to uh, but some of the things you can do. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure table setting is in the showcase. Okay. So, uh, also with super, superintendents, when I sent out the email uh, for you to look at your sections, I also asked if you could look at the number of entries you're allowing and with the potential of going up with the entry counts. Um, Showcase is basically free to us. It doesn't cost us anything. We don't give premiums. We don't give real ribbons other than if they enter I think it's six. Six entries, I think they get a flat, a double flat. Yeah. Um, but other than that, the only limiting thing that we have for entries is the judge's ability to judge what comes in. But we can photography, you can have 20 entries or put your, your entry count at 20. And that's fine. Uh, one thing, if you have a higher count for entries is the exhibitors who put it in and they put in 20, they can choose the best 10 that got the most reviews, put those 10 into the county fair. Or if they're just needing something on this one and the, what they're shooting is still there, they can go take a little bit better picture of it. So it is definitely a learning opportunity for them, non judgmental because the only people who are gonna see them really are the judges. It's not like the county fair where we put them all on a wall. So it's a non-threatening way for them to get feedback from people who are most likely to judge them at county fair or people like them. So any questions on county fair or spring showcase? Okay, well, let's move into fair entry. Staff levels, I need staff lists again. And I need to know who's judging, who's checking in, who's entering results. And if you have assistants that need more access, manager access, I need that too. All superintendents, most assistant superintendents do get manager level access. Um, when you have manager level access, you do need to remember that rules don't apply to you, or most rules don't apply to you. 
So be very, very careful when you go into fair entry and start making entries because you as managers can make entries into fair entry. And all the limits that are put in there, like photography, photography for 4-H has a 10 picture limit. You as a manager can go in there and just start putting photos in. It will not stop you at the 10th or the 11th photo. So please remember that. What you do does have consequences. Custom questions. If you have any custom questions that you need put in, or you need adjusted, or you need taken out, let me know. Uh, those have, I believe those have to be put in by administrators. And our fair has two administrators. One is me and one is Shelly. Are we talking still this spring showcase or are we talking about county? This is regular county fair. Spring showcase is over. Although this does apply for the most part to, to uh, spring showcase because it's all on the same platform. <clears throat> uh, one last thing with uh, spring showcase and if this is somewhat for county fair also. Judges for spring showcase, if they need tutorials on how to get in there, let me know. We can set up a Zoom and I can go through how to judge online for them. Because judging in the spring showcase is totally different than judging in person. Because it's all done virtually. <clears throat> is anything different with that this year than last year? Because I had had an online, I had a instructional form for them all. No, the process is the same. Yeah. There are some changes um, that I'll come to uh, when we start doing land trees. Um, but the judging side is totally the same. First one showcase. Okay, custom questions. Uh, just an example of a custom question. Poultry has a custom question asking what birds are coming to fair and has certain questions to answer. So if you have questions like that, that you have to have answered for every entry or once they enter your department. And remember, every time they enter your department, they're going to answer these questions. The fair questions at the beginning are only asked once. So if they want wristbands or camping spots or parking passes, Families have to do that the first pass through. Once they get past that, every time they go into your department, if you have special questions, they have to answer them again. And then it depends on which level of the hierarchy you're in as to when they get answered. Um, entry deadline dates, um, please make sure they're in for 2022 in the fair book. And remember that you don't can't just go in and change the year because the day changes also. So last year, I think one of the entry deadlines was August 11th, and that changes to August 10th. And all animals are due, I believe it's on July 20th. It's the third Thursday of the month of July is when animals are due. I thought it was like the second. Um, clover buds. Uh, please remember that clover buds have dis different judging standards than junior, intermediate, and senior members. They do not get a blue, white, and red ribbon, or blue, red, and white ribbon. They get a clover bud ribbon. Their judging is all done by interview, not by you didn't do this right, you didn't do this right. So you're getting this points. So there's no point space. It's trying to get them to understand why they did what they did and how they got where they were. What about fit and show? Fitting and showing, uh, most of the departments I think now have modified uh, score sheets. I think for DOMS we have a, you know, uh, what you did great at or what can you do. Yeah. But there is no points associated with right. it is just our. And also remember that 
Clover buds cannot do horses, cows, llamas, pigs, or swine, goats, most goats, sheep. Uh, they can do novelty goats and pygmy goats. Those are the only two large animals they can deal with. Everything else they can't do hitting and showing with. Uh, and other than horseless horse, they shouldn't be doing herdsmanship either uh, because they're not in that project. If you want to have fun with some of your clover bud siblings, uh, you can always do fitting and showing with a cutout. So if you have a cutout of a cow, there is a project now that is cutout animals. So they can learn everything about doing fitting and showing with a beef cow, um, but they aren't doing it with a beef cow. They're doing it with a large cutout of a beef cow or a tall llama or whatever. Special awards, if you want special awards, let me know if they're not in there and we can add them fairly easily. The standard ones are grands, reserves, best of show, best of class, and there's several others. Uh, so if it's not in there, let me know, we can add it fairly easily. Reports, um, there is one report I wanted to show you. Uh, it's fairly informative when you're doing your fair book. Oops, not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. Okay, you should be seeing, oh, not that. Okay, in fair entry in standard reports, if you go to hierarchy, it's the first tab. Go down to classes without entries. And this will show you all of the classes and lots that did not have entries last year. If you would like this report, let me know. I can print it out for you. Um, and I can go back to 2016. Uh, so if you want to know, Historically, what lots and classes have not had entries, I can get that for you. Also under reports, if there are, please look through your custom reports. If your predecessor did a lot of custom reports and you're not using them, please delete them because those roll over year after year after year, and our list is getting pretty long. So um, please uh, just go through there and see if there's any that we can delete. Um, also, as we get closer to fair, I may go through there, and if it hasn't been used in three or four years, I may just delete it anyways, just so we get some of it cleared out. Uh, check in. Um, I don't really care how you check things in. Uh, you need to do what works for your department. Uh, but by the time fair starts, whatever is in the fair, entered into the fair, should be checked in. Uh, it can be done multiple ways. Um, you can do multiple sheets. Uh, there's bulk check-ins. But check-ins is how, the real important thing about check-ins is that is how our checks are run. Our checks are run based on who was checked in. So. so if they're not checked in, they don't get premium. Correct. Yes. 
So please make sure every exhibitor that is exhibiting, actually every exhibit that is exhibited, every entry in the animals that is entered and there, make sure they're checked in. It's not that hard. It does take a little time. Um, there are reasons why they do some of the things they do, which is really frustrating sometimes, but there are reasons why they do it. And it may have nothing to do with our fair, but it may have something to do with a fair on the other side of the country. Um, but it is one system that everybody uses. Um, so it goes down to the lowest common denominator, um, which means some fairs aren't using some of the, the features. Result input. Uh, please enter your results by the Monday after fair. It's best if you can enter them as you go. Last year, we didn't do too bad. Uh, I think we we're done by Friday. Uh, but the sooner the, all the results get put in, the faster we can get the checks to all the exhibitors. We can't, get, we can't cut checks until all of the results are in. We do one check run. Any questions on fair entry? We will have the computer set up in the office again this year. Um, so you can go to the office and check in, uh, put in your results. If you would like to check out a computer, we have that available. With, with scanners. Um, we have two of the scanners that are wireless and we have, I think it's 10 of the other wire, wired scanners. Um, we do have computers you can check out. We do have Wi-Fi in every building except the dog barn. And hopefully next year we'll have that, maybe. Um, do we have it in the... Grand ship. There's the problem with the dog barn is there's a huge building on one side, uh, the coral building, and the poultry barn is on the other, which cuts out signals from both directions. Because the Grange, uh, the lodge does have its own Wi Fi from the county, um, the office has its Wi Fi. And I'm not sure if the one in the parking lot at Dr. Peter will be working if the dogs would still get it, but I doubt it because it then has a lot of trees. In it. I got the lodge one from Archery, like sitting by the ring. Right. Um, you can sit in the lodge. We have a table and chairs. Yeah, you can really have them all fed. You can sit and do it or come into the box. I, I couldn't. I was stuck in Archery last year. I couldn't leave because I was the only instructor. When another instructor came, I would be like, you have the line. I'm running to the back of them. Uh, but every every building except the dog barn has fairly good internet reception now. The dog barn just sits way too far back and up on a hill. Are the scanners improved? I know last year, I think I must have tried three or four scanners and they would not slow down. Uh, we'll probably have to I'll invest in a couple more. Yeah, wires. I ended up typing every scanner, which is faster. Yeah, the wired ones are good for about 75% of the time, mostly. Uh, the wireless scanners are probably 90% of the time. So, and we do have two of those. One is permanently in the office. The other one can grow, uh, roam. And we can get a couple more of the wireless. If you have any questions on fair entry, let me know. Um, once you get your fair books in, I'll be going through fair entry and getting it updated. I'm hoping if all the superintendents can cooperate, hopefully fair entry will be ready for checking for you by May 1st, if everybody turns in their stuff. Uh, Spring Showcase is almost ready to go. I'm just waiting on updates from superintendents. Um, I should be able to roll over the horse qualifying shows and the dog qualifying shows fairly quickly. And then the shooting sports opens tomorrow for their national shoot. Got a couple of questions. Oh. Uh, Penny says, please don't fall, check in, and Kathy Johnson wants to know if there's Wi Fi in the floor building. Oh. 
It's uh, not technically in the floor right. building. It would be um, from the lodge. And you should be getting it um, from there, and you might even get it some from the office. I think I was getting fairly strong signals in that area from both buildings. I agree with me. I know both check in. I did have a couple of meetings last year that people were just checking in like the entire kid and stuff wasn't there. And I think that's what happened with Penny too. And then went, so I had to uncheck it. Yes. If you are a superintendent, please only check in items, entries from your department. Just as a courtesy to other superintendents. And some of that doesn't really matter because you only give them ribbons, but it's just a common courtesy not to check in someone else's exhibits. Um, department each. Did you set that right? It went out. There are also some here. Okay. So your department needs list um, also went out in that last email and it's a fillable form. So you can fill it out if you have a PDF um, reader, uh, Adobe or whatnot. And that's also a free download if you don't have it. Um, so fill it out, get it back. And um, we can send it to you again or separately. If you, if you can't download it, you can always print it, fill it out and uh, turn it in that way as well. You have them if we sent them in with our books last year, correct? So if you're if it was updated at that point mm -hmm. for department eights, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if it was in if you had something in your book, um, you know, we pull those out and try to get those um, you know, with all our information, even if it was a supply list, if you updated it for this year or um, and we want to encourage you again, if you have something that needs to be fixed, um, especially if it's like a display case or something that you tag it with, there's tags in your book, um, it gets tagged with one of those so that it doesn't get buried. Now I doesn't guarantee it won't get buried because I did ask the maintenance guys about that last time and they're like, oh, we didn't pay attention. I'm like, I like it's bright orange. <laughs> Can't miss it. So, um, so that happens. You know, we're we're getting better. But the Grange Building was painted this uh, last winter, and um, so it's got a fresh coat of paint, and it has kind of a chair rail idea where the dividers can be attached to now, so they can be moved as needed to accommodate shifts in departments and uh, groups. Yeah, other than that, department needs, if you have any questions or. I have a, yes. I, I, I just thought I could think of the ask if, if I need mean, for time that's not. We, we had a problem last year with the um, presentation stage when we double booked and the things were not supposed to have it for performing arts. Yeah, and we need to get that schedule, like we need your schedule. And I have every every evening. Except for Sunday, from um, I don't know whenever the public presentation stops, it's like six or seven minutes until nine. Okay. Um, and I don't know, you know, they, they're allowed to enter right up until the fair, but you know, at that point when the fair happens, I'll know, okay, I've got these on this night and these on that night. But until then, I don't know if they took their time. Okay. Yeah, I think it was just the, mm -hmm. the, uh, what was actually happening there. Yeah, and those people were not very cooperative. So. Okay, so if you want that from six to nine, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and yes. then what about Sunday? I don't do it on Sunday. You said the main performance, the main stage? No, no the stage. public presentation oh, the, the, by the doctor. Press, yeah, so they start to use that. Um, and that brings up a point, you know, with your scheduling, especially um, and separately. So we'll send out forms for it, but we need your barn schedule, we need your arena schedule. Um, it's not only our 75th, so we want to look nice, but we it's also our year for the commissioner. 
So we need to have all these things kind of dialed in. Um, you know, lots of information in your areas as to, you know, why things are judged the way they are, um, signage as to what's happening, uh, schedules posted. We have a gal that will create the schedules for posting, but she needs the information. So we need those up. And even if it's, um, you don't have anything on Saturday, but it's gonna happen on Sunday, that should be out there. Um, or you have maybe one list shows all four days, and then you have one that is just for the day that, you know, whether it's Thursday or Friday or whatnot. Um, so that somebody who's at the fair can see um, what's coming, you know, maybe it would encourage them to come back, you know, if there's something they've been wanting to see or they catches their interest, you know, maybe they would come back to see it. So how far ahead do you be? Um, well, I think, you know, probably June, so, you know, <laughs> June would be nice. Uh, I've got the gal that does it, you know, before it was like earlier, the better, because trying to do too many things. But, you know, I realize it's tough to gather all that. The arenas that are shared, you guys really need to work together to uh, more stages, <laughs> as the case may be, um, you know, to get an arena schedule, not just your schedule and then somebody else comes along and it's like, you know, oh, we usually use it then. And we, you know, so try to get together, whether it's on the phone, on a Zoom, um, in person, right now, socially distanced outside. Um, but, um, you know, try to get together and plan that. So if you're sharing an arena, let's, let's get an arena schedule going so we can post that every day and the fair people know what's uh, going on. I was just wondering because like for food activities, usually end up having to write our schedule on a, or our daily what's going on on a, a board because the entries aren't finalized until just before the fair. That's, yeah, that's fine. I think we have some whiteboards. Yeah, we use those. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, works good for the kitchen area. You know, it says what's coming up, you know, and if you know tomorrow there's going to be a couple more, you can, you know, put that on there as well or which is second one. Question. Um, yes, uh, Lisa, we do have someone who can do that. Um, and we she actually had a form here kind of toward the end where you just had to fill out the form and then she um, created that poster to print out for you. So we do have somebody that can do that. And Penny, to answer your previous question, we we don't do a float for the parade only because number one, it's a lot of work. We don't have somebody to do it. And for the daffodil parade, they require like a certain number of daffodils, like hundreds yes. per float. And so we are not at that stage of the game. We have had a truck for the princesses to ride in at times. We've had a um, different types of trucks. We had an old old pickup truck one year and that was nice, but um, usually we're walking. Any other questions? Can we get um, the, uh, yes, Lisa, we'll get that sent out. And put in and put in teams also. What's that? And if we can get that put in teams. Oh yes. Um, we kind of covered ribbons a little bit, but um, I do have a master list of all the ribbons we have. So if you ever want to look at it, just let me know. I can email you that. Um, otherwise, that's in the process. And we have questions about ribbons. Also, if you want to know what ribbons you had last year, what you gave out last year, um, I can get you that. Um, what is this that's piece that here? Is. That's what I was just talking about. Oh, that's, that's, the that's the ribbons from last year. Last year. It also does awards you gave out last year. But that's not real representative. That's almost there. No, I can actually get you that from any fair that you want. I'm just saying. It's Back to 2016. Yeah, very small. Yeah.
The only one I wouldn't get you is 2020 because that would definitely not be worth a lot of money. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Sponsorships. Uh, okay, sponsorships. Um, yeah, sponsorships, if you know someone, a company, uh, individual that might be interested in sponsoring your barn or your building or even um, the fair in general. Um, if you have a name and a contact, that's great. If you want to, if you know them well enough, if you want to talk to them a little bit briefly, beforehand or just you want to just turn over the information you know we can approach them um, we can mention your name or not that's really up to you um, but just someone you think might be fair friendly and interested in your sponsoring um, a department or a barn um, we also are seeking sponsors for the student tickets again this year in 2018 we handed out over 19,000 and 2019 we handed over 30, 30, 1,000, right around in there. And we give them out to the school district offices and they hand them out to the elementary schools. And so our sponsors get their uh, logo on the back of the ticket and then the front, um, you know, it has the dates and whatnot. And then it's uh, for free students. So it's up to age 15, but at currently we're just targeting the elementary schools. Um, we, I think even with 30,000 tickets, that was only five districts in Pierce County. And so that is not even half, um, of the students. It's crazy. There's a whole lot of, whole lot of kids out there. So pass those out in like June before. Yes. We give them out before the schools, uh, close for the summer and we bag them up in paper sacks by school and take them all to the district office and they just and then each bag has them bundled according to what the school wants usually by 10 or 25 or whatnot and then um, they pass those out to the schools and get them distributed they've typically been very excited to get them we've not had any negative pushback on passing out tickets we did have to add a disclaimer to the front we got to sign you know, some waiver paperwork um, to get it distributed um, and pre-approved. But we've only had one district that said, no, thank you. And that was Tacoma. So, yeah. And I thought, well, if we get enough tickets that we could give them to Tacoma, like we've given out to everybody else, then I'd probably go through the PTA. So do you, is there a way, is there a way to keep track how many actually um, yeah, we track them because um, they're scannable, so they scan when they come back. And um, at current, it's not a huge amount. Um, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head what it was for 2019. Um, you know, because you do have the lag between June and August, which is a challenge. <laughs> so um, it becomes more um, goodwill, advertising, uh, promoting, not only the fair, but the sponsor, um, and those kind of things. And if they happen to hang on to them, they get free admission. So, so do you track them by by school district or just by free ticket? Um, we have done both. Um, I believe in 2018 we separated out the tickets by number. Um, we do have some sponsors like Eatonville, um, the Eatonville Roxy sponsors Eatonville, and so we know what numbers we give to Eatonville where others like Les Schwab, there's so many of them, we just mm -hmm. disperse them to all so we don't really track those numbers very well. It, it can be done, yes. Um, 2019, it was not done. I just was curious, yeah. you know, like if you get a higher turnout from the Graham, the yeah. schools around Graham yeah. or Bethel or, or yeah. something, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And we do wonder, although we don't have any information on it, as to how many people went to the Biola Fair with the Pierce County Fair ticket and try to get in for free because it doesn't matter what it says, they think it's the Fiola Fair. So um, I would be curious as to how many tried to get in there with it. And if they honored it. I doubt. So. Yeah, I know. Dave, it says Frontier Park, it says yeah. Well, they get yeah. Yeah. And uh, and these are these are full size tickets, you know, where Washington State Fair gives them a little 
after all. So, um, I think that's all I have. Um, although we do have fair committees, if anybody you know needs something else to do, um, we have fair committees on beautification, where we plant the flowers around the grounds. Um, you can grow flowers in pots or planters at home and bring them to fair. Just let us borrow them, whether they're in hanging baskets or um, any kind of planter. And we usually bring those out, you know, the week of setup. So if you've got plants you want to just donate for fair time, um, we do our best to keep take care of them or help us plant the flower, flower beds. We usually do that um, in May, late May early June if necessary, but, um, and other committees, uh, camping committees, safety committees, um, parking, there's a, there's a whole bunch of them. So if you're interested in helping out in any committees, you don't have to be on the board to do that and you don't have to attend all the board meetings. Um, and some are uh, off season, we call it, um, and then some during fairs. There's also, there's also three ad hoc committees that will be meeting on March 15th. Um, they're here at this in this room to start with. Um, we'll open the building at six. Um, if you'd like to come at six, we'll feed you dinner, uh, pizza and salad, of course. Um, just let me know if you want to have dinner. Uh, the three committees are the points committee, and that committee will be looking at all the points and making sure everything is standardized. Um, so breed classes in beef get the same points as breed classes in swine. And activities get activity points. Herdsmanship is all the same. Um, getting and showing already is all the same. It's all 50, 40, 30. Um, and some of the still life is uh, different points for the same, basically the same thing. Uh, it's just looking through the fair book and kind of standardizing our points. Uh, the second committee is the herdsmanship committee. And it's coming up with a score sheet for herdsmanship that can be used by all of the animal departments uh, if they so choose. Um, but it's basically coming down with criteria of how we are going to judge the herdsmanship kids on how they're doing herdsmanship now that they get actual dollars for doing herdsmanship. Uh, the third committee is the newest one. It's on exhibitorship, which is still life. Um, and a score sheet for how, what are the duties of the, of the herds, uh, exhibitorship exhibitors? Um, what are their duties? How are they going to be judged? Um, uh, some sort of score sheet. Uh, and so that all three types are all two types of uh, exhibitorship kids basically are equal. So it doesn't matter if you're in the Grange or if you're in the Lodge. Your, the expectations are the same for exhibitorship. And it doesn't matter if you're in the horse barn or the cat barn. Herdsmanship is pretty much the same. Your ex expectations are the same uh, for each department. Granted, in animals, a lot of it depends on how many exhibitors you have as to how many times they're doing herdsmanship. So that will be, all be here. We'll start with a joint opening and go over the, the ground rules. Uh, and then we'll be splitting out. And these will all be Zoomed also. Uh, the three committees will be on the same Zooms. Uh, we'll just do breakout rooms. Um, so we do have two other uh, conference rooms in this building uh, reserved. Um, they both have uh, computers, so they'll be Zoomed in there. So you're welcome to attend. Um, that is March 15th. Those of you that know your Shakespeare, beware the Ides of March. Or in this case, be here on the Ides of March. Um, and that's a Tuesday. That's a Tuesday. 
Um, for 4 H superintendents, posters are due in the system the second Wednesday of July. They're turned in on Thursday. And Connie, when is the qualifying show in July? You know? Yeah. Posters can also be turned in at the, the horse qualifying show at Frontier Park. What day is it? It's July 13th. Oh, the same day as the super. The date on the agenda is wrong. Okay. So, what day is that? Should be a Saturday, Sunday. What? The pre fair meeting? Mm -hmm. the, the horse qualifying show. show. Oh, oh. No, no, I'm not thinking about ninth and tenth. Yeah. I'm talking about when posters are due. Posters are due in here on the 14th. They have to be in for uh, fair entry on the 13th okay. yeah. by 10 p.m., but they can be turned in the 9th or the 10th at Frontier Park. They have to be in the system before they turn them in to Frontier Park because Connie's not going to enter them for them. Uh, they aren't entered into the system by the time they get to Frontier Park, they'll have to ring them here. And they can bring them here on the 14th from nine to six. On the 18th is the judging. And then 18th is judging. We are looking for judges every year. Uh, judging is fairly easy. Um, so July 18th is poster judging, and then 19th, the 19th is the superintendent meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Superintendents are always the day after the poster judging, or as it's the oldest, older of the two. Poster judging is the day before the superintendent's <laughs> meeting, which is when you will get the posters back. Okay, what's the 13th? It's last year's superintendent oh, meeting. Oh, so it's the 19th. It is the 19th, it's not is the 13th. It, is May 11th, correct? Uh, she'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but back to posters. Um, there are two poster classes that anyone can enter. One is 4-H on 4-H uh, promotion. Anyone can enter that. Um, safety is also open for anyone. And it is general safety. It is not dog safety. It is not sewing safety. It is not horse safety. It is safety. So if they turn in a, a poster that has always wear your helmet when you're on a horse, that will probably, if they have already turned in a horse poster, that one will be disqualified because it is a second horse poster. If they have a poster that says, always wear your helmet when you ride, and they have a bicycle, a skateboard, a horse, a jet ski, that is a general safety poster because that is a helmet safety poster, not a horse safety poster. That's my favorite one because that's the one we always get. Yeah. Um, so please remind your kids in your in your uh, departments. General safety is general safety. It's not project safety. It saves them heartache. It saves our judges heartache, and it really helps poor Helen because she's the one that has to make the decision. And Cindy. Uh, the last thing I have is the info booth, the 4 H ticket booth. Um, each department will have a set number of times they have to pre um, pre have people there. The ticket table is there for the benefit of your exhibitors. The ticket table is not there because Sadie has to be there, um, but it is for the benefit of the kids in the departments. So the departments need to step up and help staff that table. It does not have to be a leader. It does not even have to be an adult. One of the best person people sitting there has been a 17 year old. 
And I think it was one of your kids. I had, I had kids there in the past, yeah. I know. So, we do ask that they be seniors uh, because there is some things they will need to be able to discuss. Um, it does help if they have 4-H knowledge uh, because we do get 4-H questions. Um, Sadie and I will be around there, um, but Sadie has to have some help in that booth um, because she every, every so often she needs to get out of that booth, partly for her sanity and partly for other reasons. Um, <clears throat> it's a um, short way to the bathroom, but the booth still has to be open. Uh, there's a question about hours for training and posters on July 9th and 10th at the horse call fine show. It starts at eight. Like, yeah, eight. And it goes, runs through the. Uh, I'd say we're always there till three. That would be yeah. safe. After that, it just depends on whether it's or not. Uh, the one at Frontier Park is the horse department's gift to 4 H. Um, they're not going to stay there extra hours just because they're being nice. It is during the run of the qualifying show. Um, and it's mostly the horse kids that have put posters in. Yeah. We have had kids from other projects put our tournament posters there, which is great. Free, yeah. Yeah. I would say some of the Edenville kids appreciate it. Yeah. And I'm usually there that those two days. Um, so if you have fair entry questions, if I don't know it, or if Connie doesn't know it, I usually know it. And Connie's pretty good with fair entry, so she can live through it for you. So, May. May. Yeah, so we, um, we, uh, we were wanting to have uh, another superintendent meeting slash training in May and uh, kind of gone back and forth between, um, it probably won't be a joint fair board superintendent meeting only because uh, the fair board's on Tuesday and that date's Wednesday, but um, I was gonna find out if there was a possibility of having something on a Saturday, um, but as far as I can tell, May 7th is the only date really in May that's available. Um, and Sunday, May 8th is Mother's Day. So I don't know how many people that would affect if it's <laughs> the meetings on a Saturday. I from oh my God, Steve, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Hallmark here. Um, it would be uh, more of a general meeting. So it would be a volunteer recognition day. Um, slash we would feed you so it kind of depends on what time of day um, what you would, what we would have and then do breakouts where it would be animal superintendents still life superintendents and then general volunteers in one or more groups depending on um, what types we have there and who's uh, leading those groups and but there'd be some also kind of general training for fair um, including some safety and security type issues, and um, and then as well as any other superintendent pertinent uh, information that needs to be gone over or discussed. So, um, does a Saturday sound like it could work? Would work? No. No work. Um, I I have I think every Saturday booked. If it's not work, it's shooting sports and it's getting ready for shows in May and it's dog projects. So. And if we did personally, that's my a weekday evening. I mean that's a possibility, and we um, you know provide dinner for those that um, want to have it. Yeah. yeah. I may or may not. I'm starting to work more in January. Um, so it is, would, uh, we originally had May 11th on here, would um, an evening, whether it's a Tuesday or Wednesday, work for people to meet, have some dinner, do a little bit of training? Personally, June's a better month than May for me, but I don't know what other people's. 
Maybe because I'm just super swamped in May. But um, no, June's also a possibility. It's usually much about the same for me. Yeah. I just weekends are really really big um, um, Saturdays just don't work for me because I have to actually ask for about the work. That's my regular work. Okay. So maybe an evening during the week, um, early June. Back up there, let's see. June is better. Anyway, how about a Wednesday evening in June? So take it off with May 11th. Yeah. Do uh, June 8th. I know it, you know. We're probably not going to find a date that works for everybody, yeah. everybody, but um, you know, the best we can do and then try to make it a reoccurring thing every year where we have that um, extra meeting. Because I feel like this uh, no, we'll be at the fairgrounds. Um, just doing one in February and then waiting till July, I feel like it's not enough. Um, having one more either for specialty training or just in general to kind of touch base and keep things moving forward. Um, when does registration for fair open? It wouldn't be that day. It'll be in June. I was just curious because like the last, you know, if we had questions or, you know, before or after that, the entry is open. Just curious. Yeah, if we did that, we'd have to back up into May again. We, we could do like May 18th if, if yeah. the Wednesday is workable. And if we meet, if we do meet um, like May 18th or something, then if there are any other fair entry um, needs or issues or corrections or as well as the fair book for that matter. So um, that might be a better idea to kind of push it back to May, maybe um, May 18th, if that works for most. And then um, if there's any adjustments with the fair book before it goes live or fair entry before it gets sent out, uh, then this would be fixed at that time as well. Well, we'll go with May 18th and Feed you some dinner and show our appreciation and do some training. So it would be earlier than seven, though. Well, we'd probably start at six. We'd probably start food, and then you know people can still eat if they, you know, if they couldn't get there till seven, they could still eat. Um, I don't get in there. Yeah, it's getting late. It's already. And I do have the info booth schedule. Thank you, Kim. Bye. Um, so it's mainly animals because they're the ones that are affected by the tickets. Um, so each day from 10 to 11.30 would be dogs. 11.30 to one is cats and poultry. 1 to 2.30, small animals, which would be rabbits, cavies, pets. 2.30 to 4 would be goats. 4 to 5.30 would be horse. And 5.30 to 7 would be livestock, which would be beef, dairy, swine, llamas, alpacas, and sheep. And that's every day? Yes. The easiest is to have the same time every day. It's only one person, so you only have to find four people or two people or three people or one person. And they're all hour and a half blocks, so it's not a lot of time.
And I will remind you again in on May 18th. And on July 19th. Any questions about anything we talked about tonight? If not, I would like to thank you for coming and for all you do for the fair, for 4-H, uh, for Pierce County. Hey, and, and thank you all. And we do have these little short-term positions that are wonderful, <laughs> a little extra money for Christmas. I'm just saying, <laughs> have a good night. Okay. I did use that email. You sent it up. Are you a chair? And either you list um, required photos or not? Yeah. You yeah, just the list of requests. All I have are those. Um, I, I know you're baking. It's not an email. Yeah. It's in the server. It's in the No, I thought I sent it with that. That you know, it's too attached to the Maybe because, yeah, I checked. I was getting down the test or went there before I got here just to kind of double check what I did. I have it. I have it. I have it. I have it. So we can create another one, but if you come across this one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you can see. I still have them all. I just want to make sure you had them all because I didn't delete them off my computer. Yeah, that's the only ribbons I need are those. They're in the system. There were still quite a few, I think. Yeah. We're selling new yeah. arts and stuff. And, and uh, yeah. I really like them too. So, so nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so making a quick preservation. Yeah, if you yeah, find it, let me know. Okay. And then, because otherwise we'll create a new one. And then um, on the book, we'll want to update it. You know, back to it. So. Yeah. I've got an end of my box here. Right. Because I do horses too. Yeah, I know. So it's it's <laughs> overlap. Yeah, no, it should be a, it, it's a beef patty box. Right. Yeah, yeah I know. And I don't have it because I get those from my ribbons. Yes, and then um, and then the binders are just, uh, yeah. So yeah. Kind of Do I need to put a key? I put some that that store that's on so my needs list so that way you can put it. Yeah, so that it gets. That's really the only thing I need. That one is third is ahead of time. Yeah, <laughs> and then for baking. Because they, they have to open it to get the screen. See, and maybe I sent you an email back and it had a little note yeah. saying. Well, I would think the public presentation people are opening it every day. Well, possibly. No. But there, it just says youth and it had that. And I said, yeah. well, take that yeah. sentence out because there's no nothing with it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, we're always telling this is the list out there. It's it just has that sentence. Time, so like, there was a spreadsheet. Yeah, that's there. In there I wonder if that's in there. Yeah, so if we can publish her. So my, my plan is to get the books back to everybody in May. Mm -hmm. They've announced that they get them earlier. Okay. And then if we have any updates, we can distribute those in July as well. And then Kenny, uh, so because it was like different ones need different things. Yeah. yeah the book. So the word version is a cut down version. Of the books. This is the actual guide. Okay, so we yeah. were covered then. I was yeah. like, okay, yeah. I know. I have spreadsheets of all those. Yeah. Easier. Because this one does not have the classes. I'll look again. The classes are actually yeah, just a handful of ribbons. Right. Yeah. We're not judging anything, so right. Okay.
Yeah, let me know. And so the cooking is the only thing that has anything oh, different. Yeah. It's different. Well, no, so did and food preservation would have too. Right, that's in on this chart. It's on that chart. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know the, the, the one was pretty yeah. neat. Yeah, had the four photos, but on the mixing of food and the baking, we had to detail it out more. Oh, no, it is. They're after the chart. I knew last year's chart was after the thing, but it's really. I have more. You have more? I think it's a CPA. Isn't there a 